I feel like I'm very fortunate to be doing what I'm doing. And I feel like if I didn't try my best, I would be doing a disservice to this chance that I've been given. There's so many things in my life that could have stopped me from being here. And the fact that things just keep opening up, I think I just need to respect that. So I am Nene Mashangu and I am a visual artist and I am a creative who loves creating beautiful things. I love being a creative because it mean, for me it means experimenting, it means playing, it means not being confined in one medium or <clears throat> one approach. So what brought me here is the fact that I'm the recipient of the Women to Watch Award the Women to Watch 2023 award. So that's why you see my face. <laughs> and yeah, I'm very excited about this. I'm really, I'm excited to play and to stretch myself. And I think through this award, you're gonna see an angle of my work that hasn't been seen before. So yeah, that's why I'm here. I think that the thing that made me wanna try was the fact that I have I feel like I'm finally at that point in my career where I'm confident about what I'm doing. Um, if I had applied two years ago, three years ago and won, I don't think I would have been ready. Um, I, at the beginning of my career, I was very nervous about what I was doing, why I'm doing it, you know, approach, technique. I was just very nervous and I think I'm at that point where if I am faced with something new, I can face it with confidence and I can deliver it well. So I think just accepting the fact that I'm at that point where I'm comfortable in my own skin, I'm finally comfortable. And I think this award came at the right time. It's a number of things. A number of things brought me to being an artist. I mean, when I did art in school and in high school, I was good at it, but I was also good at other things. And I wanted to really study art, but when it was time for me to go to varsity, and my parents were paying for my, um, my studies, they were like, if you're studying art, we're not gonna pay for it. So when I went to varsity, I went to Tux, I studied medical science, because at that time I thought I wanted to be a doctor, until I was inside, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> this is uh, shocking. How do I not have PTSD? <laughs> Uh, I think the point where I decided to um, make this a full-time thing was when I couldn't focus at work. I, w I was not a bad employee, I mean I was really good, but I, my ambitions just weren't in that place. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I just didn't see a future there. And I was young, you know, early 20s, and I was like, you know what, let me give it a try. I mean. I'm, I don't have kids, I don't have a lot of commitments, I really want to do this and I, I understand my work ethic, I, I really understand what I can give into something if I commit. And if I commit and it works out great, if I commit it doesn't work out then I guess that's a sign. So just everything around me was kind of, was allowing me to do it, right? And. Yeah, and then I had like a six months plan where I was working and then saving money, saving money, so that when I do make the leap, I'm not attached to my old life. So yeah, that's what happened. And then when the six month timeline came, <clears throat> I was like, okay, I made a decision. I, I like I made a promise to myself. Let me just go ahead. I, I believe like to be a creative. To work in this field, you need bravery because you're going against a current, you're swimming upstream, you know. And um, the bravery that I found, I found it through players in my life who kept encouraging me because wherever I worked or wherever I, I was, I was always drawing, I was always painting, I was always doing something creative. And the people around me were like, why aren't you taking this seriously? Now I'm at a point where things are stacking up and um, it's demanding a much better version of myself, I guess. But I think the thing that really is carrying me through is the, like, the entrepreneurial spirit that my parents gave me. Um, 
I don't think I would have been able to maneuver in this industry if I didn't have that. From a young kid, running a business or operating a business is something that was ingrained in my in my being. So it wasn't it wasn't a tough thing to switch over to becoming an artist because I already had the like what is it like modus operandi of running a what it takes to run something to grow something. Um, <clears throat> so I guess that has made things a little bit easier. I wasn't I wasn't like oh let me follow my dream. <laughs> you know it wasn't <laughs> just like that. I already had like a structure, an idea of what it takes in order to kind of build something. I'm still learning. I'm not saying that I know it all, but that kind of helped. You know what's funny about the coin collaboration? It was probably one of the first jobs I've had as an artist. So I entered the industry as somebody who designed coins and I thought that was what everybody did, you know? So they emailed me. No, yeah, they emailed me and they asked me if I was available for this opportunity because by that time I was putting things out there. I was putting things on Facebook, I was putting things on Instagram. And then there comes a process where we assigned the Bill of Rights, um, like each is assigned a Bill of Rights, right? And then we submit drafts and then they give us feedback and then it, that goes on for like three months. And then after that three months, four month process, they send me an email, they're like, would you be interested in designing two coins? And I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so then the second coin, also we do back and forth, back and forth for that. Cause none of the people there had the experience of designing money. It's a different approach. It's a completely different approach. So they really help us in understanding that process. And yeah, after like a year of back and forth, you know, the coins were finally launched and released and in circulation. So the Black Coffee High Ibiza collaboration um, was a collaboration that needed me to create 23 artworks, which means an artwork for every Saturday of the five month residency, right? And the residency is called Saturdays at High Ibiza. So I had to create artwork for every single time they announced the DJ. Because every Saturday is a different DJ, right? It's a different lineup, different vibe. And yeah, I had to create 23 artworks for that. And um, he had been following my work for a while. And then his people sent me an email. Because I get to have my email on my, on my Instagram. And they sent me an email. <laughs> and the heading of the email was Black Coffee X Nene. X Ibiza and I was like oh, oh, what <laughs> but for me like like I said uh, previously I love collaboration and this was a collaboration that I told myself that if this thing when I when I saw that email title I was like if this is true I'm gonna make sure that my work is fire like let's go let's go let's like let's play this is this is events it's not a gallery space it's not a exhibition well it could be if you wanted it to be but this was a completely different realm like it was party you know free fun happy atmosphere there were no rules i just saw it as no rules so i could make anything so yeah, when I, when I, the mindset that I approached that collaboration with was that this is a time to, to stretch myself and try my best. And it's the first time I actually painted in color, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, it was the first time I painted in color. And it felt like a creative boot camp. <laughs> I approached it as a creative boot camp because all that work I had to make in like three weeks. So I was like, it's now or never. So I'm so glad that I did that. I feel like it made me a better painter and it made me more confident in my approach and in trying and failing. And yeah, I think that's the highlight. The highlight is not actually being in a beef. That was great. I think the, the personal highlight is the fact that I stood up to the challenge and I delivered. That's for me, the thing that I'm taking away from that. And I learned so much from just observing their team yeah, yeah, it was great, very inspirational. Yes. 
I love making beautiful art. <laughs> I love making beautiful art. I think life is tough and life is hard as it is and I wouldn't want to look at work that reminds me of that and I think it's important to create work that you look at it and your eyes just can rest you know and just admire for just a bit because life is already so hectic because I love painting I think painting is such a therapeutic medium and if you know how to do it well I think it can really evoke special feelings I really love that about it but I also love digital art and the creativity that it allows us to have through just breaking the rules and creating like three-dimensional environments. I really love that. But I think <clears throat> my approach is um, if I have a specific idea or story in mind, I kind of think about like what are the best resources that I have around me in order to communicate that in the time that I have. So I love beautiful design, beautiful aesthetic, beautiful colors, beautiful um, influences. Um, but my major influence is the woman in my life. I, I, I feel like I'm at an age where I'm defining what a woman is for me. Um, throughout my life, I think I've been forced, not forced, but definitions have been pressed towards me about what a woman must be, right? And I, for a long time, I was very uncomfortable with those definitions because I'm a, I'm a former tomboy who loves playing PlayStation and Xbox, but loves being a girl, you know, like, <laughs> what does that make me? I don't know. So just defining what beauty is and what I find interesting through my work is something that really needs my approach. Confidence is an issue that I have had some trouble with and um, especially as a young person. So when when I do like portraiture where I put my face on the artwork, that is something that I've had much difficulty doing for a very long time. And I guess it's my, like I'm trying to um, put the low self-esteem and the insecurities to the side and try to, you know, take it off one layer at a time through doing that. And um, I know some people have labeled that as, if I, if I do portraiture and then my face is on it, they've labeled it as me being a little bit egocentric. But I know it can come across as that, but for me, it's just a girl trying to peel away her insecurities. So for me, being comfortable in your own skin is something that is a big, 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 big motivator of mine. And I try to, you know, show that in my work. So in terms of what I'm working on right now, there's a show in Switzerland that's gonna open up and also doing a couple of digital work that, you know, it's gonna be released soon. And in terms of women to watch, award i'm definitely going to step out of my comfort zone i'm very excited <laughs> to be trying new things and i just want to give the audience a flavor or a side of me that they haven't seen before and i think with any collaboration even though this is an award that i want i'm i'm looking at it as a collaboration like with any collab or opportunity that i'm given i think it's important to stretch the limits and see what comes out of it right and when you stretch your limits, it's going to be a bit, you know, stressful. <laughs> but only the best can come out of that. Otherwise, you're always going to remain the same and give the same style and taste and work. So I'm just excited to step out of my comfort zone and, um, yeah, try my best. <laughs>